Hi, I'm Sam, the fat middle-aged man. Today's mission, build a forklift. But not just any forklift. Let's build the best forklift. Alright, that's quite enough chit-chat from me. Let's get to it. I started this one off as I always do. Drunk. Ha! No, not really. Yes, really. Okay, so start by building the base of the rover. So I always start with this blank canvas. Yeah, everything I've built, I've color coded just so it's nice and easy to see. Start by building the base of the rover. So I decided to go with as slim of a build as I could think of, and I figured it needed to be very heavy. So we went with the combo of batteries and artificial mass straight off the bat. I stuck the off-road wheels on either end, so I could do that because the 3x3 three three wheels have this snap point available on the sides. Not all the wheels will let you do this, so just bear that in mind. Okay, next as you can see here, I have placed the cockpit. Uh, basically just so I could gauge roughly how much space I had to work with. And then we've put the pistons in front. These are the main lifter pistons of the build. Uh, yes, this does interfere with your vision. If I just sit in the cockpit, you can see there, they're obviously going to block our view. But which maniac actually drives around in first person? Come on. Uh, on the back here, I figured we needed some power, so I went ahead and just put down some conveyor ports and some reactors on top. I wasn't exactly sure how this was going to work at first, but I do like how it turned out in the end, so you'll bear with me, you'll see. Alright, next up, we needed some way to feed those reactors, so I put on the side, I just placed a curved conveyor port. See here. You might need to lower the wheels just to place that conveyor port. I had a bit of trouble the first time, but once you lower the wheels, it seems to be okay. And then on the front of that, obviously just a cargo container. I put one on either side. Okay, next we also need to merge these two pistons together just so we can use both of their combined strength whenever we're lifting something up. So to do that, just stick a merge block on either one. They'll snap together automatically. Okay, now for the next bit that I normally leave until the very, very end, actually usually until I forget that they need to even be there, gyroscopes. Yeah, this time I thought I'd mix it up and add them now. Uh, I've also added some downward facing pistons here on either side. I haven't decided yet if these are just going to be for accessing the underneath if we ever need to, or sometimes having a place to add some extra landing gears and lock this down if we need to pick up something, you know, particularly heavy. And on the pistons here, I've started working on the lifting rig. I've gone with the industrial beam blocks here as I figure they look best on this kind of build. This is a construction vehicle. It should be using the industrial blocks, right? Okay, on to the next part here. I continued building the lifting rig. I decided to go all the way along with this one, mostly using the 2 by one blocks again. This is the configuration if you want to copy along. And on the front, obviously, of that, we're going to put the landing gears. Uh, on the top of the downward pistons, what I've put here is some cylindrical columns. I'm thinking you'll see on the next one, but we're going to put some lights on there. And I figured we needed some extra counterweight on the back. So I've gone with heavy armor blocks here. Again, two by one, but full armor blocks. Okay, there we go. So we've got our rotating lights now at the top of there. So they're going to look nice when they're turned on. I've turned them off for the video just because they were irritating my eyeballs. On the front here, we've got this half block plate, which I'm going to use to add a light to this. There's one on either side. Okay, and on the front here, we've got some blast door corners, which one acts as like a counter counterweight for when we aren't carrying anything because the back's going to be very heavy, uh, but also just as a buffer in case, you know, this beach runs away from us and crash into a wall or something like that. And on the back here, you can see I've continued with the like greeble, but also functional counterweight. And then just to cover the reactors a little bit and also just, you know, a little bit of a roll cage almost, we've got uh, more two by one blocks and two by one tips. 
Don't worry about the colors, by the way. This is all going to get repainted. This is just so that you can see, obviously, the difference from one build to the next. All right, time to do some decorating. So we've stuck the lights on there, on these half plates. Uh, on the top, I've added some more half plates, as well as a row of full armor plates there. Those, I think, are heavy armor, just to add a little bit more weight, balance out the front. Uh, behind there, we've got some LCDs, one of those on either side. Those are going to get raised up when the rig gets moved up and down. So I'm going to put a, a cross or something on there just so that you know that the vehicle's in use. We've also got some neon bars here, which act kind of like, oh, almost like a, you know, a step up into the machine itself. And on the back here, I've stuck some more lights, some more neon bars, and some more LCDs. So what I wanted to do here, I wanted to add some more weight to the underside of the build. So I added some heavy armor plates in this nice looking pattern. Uh, you know, just in case we ever end up uh, <coughs> crashing. And while it was upside down, I also took the opportunity to, to add the final landing gears to our downward facing pistons. Okie doke, that's the end of part one, the main core of the build. Next time we'll be looking at the internal configuration as well as doing all of the paintwork. Be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of that. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.